Hello, my name is Jim Fentner and I'm a professor of chemical engineering, professor of chemistry, and also the department chair of chemical engineering. And I'm here today to share a short video and ideas about how to talk to your students about cheating in the classroom. What I wanna do is share mostly my perspective on how I've done this in the past and how I've been successful at doing this, as well as a little bit of what we know about the evidence base of about why students cheat. In addition, I'll do a short demo of how I actually go through and talk to my students about this when I'm in the classroom. So starting with what we know, um, it's really clear from the research literature and there's a abundance of evidence that CTL um, uh, faculty and staff can share with you that students cheat when they feel justified in cheating. And examples of when this can occur could be when there's very high stakes exams or assignments. So things that are like a huge chunk of the grade or when there's really serious consequences of failure. For example, in a core class in chemical engineering, if a student fails the class, they may actually be removed from the curriculum or lose an entire year of study, depending on which class they fail. So that is, of course, a very serious consequence. Hyper-competitive environments, such as grading on a curve, having limited numbers of top grades and things of that nature also create uh, environments where students feel justified in cheating and, and may feel incentivized to cheating. Also, students frequently don't understand the link between their own actions in the classroom and how that relates to the formation of their own ethical and moral frameworks and the long-term consequences of, of what might happen, for example, if a student develops what might be in some professions to be considered a highly unethical behavior as a result of their cheating. So what we shouldn't expect is that our students in the classroom at University of Washington are going to study our syllabus in detail where we have all of the information about cheating and academic misconduct. And we also shouldn't expect that students are gonna respond really well to draconian measures. I also wanna remind you that during this really challenging time, during this global pandemic, our options are really limited, for example, in the type of environments we create for our students to take exams. So your best approach is really to get your students to work with you in a collaborative way. What I've done over my years teaching chemical engineering courses and, and what I have found to be really effective is to take the chance on the first day of class when I'm talking about the syllabus to remind students not only that we're studying the exact subject material of that course, but that we're preparing them for their future careers. I try and pull back the curtain a little bit and talk to them like the mature adults they are. And I, I am always um, take extra care to be very clear in my syllabus in terms of what will happen if there is suspected academic misconduct. And I uniformly follow the procedures of my department and my college. And I wanna remind you that in an age where we have equity in the forefront of our minds, you run a huge risk in your classroom if you create policies and you don't fairly apply them to all your students. So above all else, I wanna encourage you to set yourself up for success by following your process through the same way every time. There's a lot of other resources that you'll find available that University of Washington has for you, and I encourage you to spend some time doing some reading of the research literature to learn more about the motivations of why students cheat. I think this will really help you prepare your own approach for how you are going to talk to your students about cheating and how you're going to incorporate uh, conversations about that into the beginning of your class. So what I'm going to do now is use a little device that I use in order to have a conversation with students um, and I'm gonna simply just go into character and pretend that you're all my students on the first day of class. And we've already talked about the first part of the syllabus and now we're gonna get into that last part where we had that difficult conversation about cheating that most students certainly don't wanna have. So I'm gonna switch views and then pretend I'm in the classroom talking to you all. So students, hopefully this answers all of your questions about the organization and structure of my chemical engineering thermodynamics class. And I wanna close this discussion today by, subject, by talking about a subject that I know is important to very many of you. I know it's important because we survey seniors when they graduate from our program. And the subject of academic misconduct among chemical engineering graduates often registers very high as a subject of concern. There's a desire to see it addressed more directly in the classroom. And I've adapted my approach to try and be really responsive to these requests and make sure I do this in every class I teach. I know that the vast majority of you find cheating in the classroom to be unethical and to be wrong. And I know that the vast majority of you are not gonna do it in my class. So thank you for hearing me out and know that I'm not gonna spend a lot of time throughout the rest of the class talking about this or waste more of your valuable time in the classroom talking about cheating because we're all here to learn thermodynamics. However, I've been a professor for over 10 years and 
every core chemical engineering class I've taught to undergraduates has had at least one case of academic misconduct of the types that are listed in your syllabus. So it's important to me that you carefully read the syllabus this week and bring to me any questions or concerns about what is considered cheating in this class. Now the syllabus explains all the nuts and bolts of what will happen if there's a suspected case of cheating. And the good news is that I follow all of University of Washington's policies. So it's not my job to determine if you have cheated. And if there's a su suspected case, I'll pass it on and all the information to the appropriate people in the College of Engineering, and you'll hear from them. I'll be clear and transparent about the process and do my best to ensure that it doesn't interfere with our work together in the classroom. But for those of you who might be inclined to cheat in this class, I want to talk to you for a moment about the nature of cheating and how it connects to your professional formation as chemical engineers. In the front of my mind is always the fact that here at Chemi, we're practicing for your future careers. And I always say that college is a great place to practice, fail, and try again. Failure is really safe here in colleges, and the consequences are generally low, much lower than out there in the real world. When you're a process engineer, um, there's huge consequences for failure, and especially when that failure stems from unethical behavior. A tendency that makes you cheat here in my class this quarter could lead you to make a huge mistake at work. And this could have huge consequences for your career. And more importantly, it could have huge consequences for the environment or even the safety of another worker where hazardous chemicals are concerned. So I'm drawing here a diagram and I could put all of you into one of these four boxes. Here on the x-axis is your attitude about cheating. You either think cheating is okay or you don't. Based on my conversations with students over the years, the vast majority of you do not think cheating is okay. That's your attitude about cheating. But there are likely a few people in the classroom who actually do think cheating is fine. This axis on the uh, X coordinate represents a part of your ethical or moral framework. It's really how you think about cheating. Now, I'm not here today to argue or persuade you towards a particular ethical or moral framework. That's your own business. And the great thing about college is you get to have a uh, lot of really interesting relationships and thought provoking experiences that will help you form that and prepare for the rest of your life. But I want you to understand that you bring your own ethical and moral framework into my classroom, and that will evolve or change over time. So you should take stock and really clearly understand about whether you think cheating is okay or not, and in what context. Now here on the y-axis is your tendency to act a certain way about cheating, your actions. In this class, you will cheat or you won't cheat. It's as simple as that. So I could put all of you now in one of these four boxes. So what I want you to really understand is this. A solid working definition of integrity in my classroom and in, in our engineering profession is someone whose actions are consistent with their ethical and moral framework. And the first thing I want for everybody in my department and my classrooms is to be a person of integrity. Because without integrity, there's no point in even discussing the core set of ethics that are successful for chemical engineering practice. Because if you, if you don't have integrity, you won't follow it, even if you understand it. So another great thing for you to think about is what is your definition of integrity in a working definition and how does it relate to your own professional goals? Now, the majority of you are clearly here in this box. You think that cheating is wrong and you aren't going to cheat in my class. Thank you. You're acting with integrity in this regard and I want you to keep it up. Good job. If you feel tempted to cheat or skirt the rules, remember that you can choose to be a person of integrity and stay in this box. It's really your choice. The majority of people who do wind up cheating are in this box here. You don't think cheating is okay, but you did it anyway. This is a huge loss of integrity and you're likely gonna regret it. There's potentially serious implications for this class as you'll find out when you read the syllabus. Please don't find yourself in this box and think carefully about how you're gonna approach your work in this class and your other classes this quarter. And the great news is that you can regain integrity by changing your attitudes or behaviors. And what this means is aligning your actions with your beliefs. You're back down here in this first corner, good job. Now, some of you might actually be up in this other box up here. You think cheating is okay and you will cheat in my class. While you're being true to your definition and having your actions align with your ethical or moral framework, we can probably, and we can make an argument that with my definition, my working definition of integrity, you're acting with some form of integrity. You really need to understand the extraordinary level of risk you're undertaking and assess the risk. Is it worth it? Because for those of you who think cheating is okay, and if you, if you act according to that thought, you're taking a lot of risk now and in the future, forming habits that will stay with you long after this class. Finally, 
Some of you might be down in this box. You think cheating is okay, but you aren't gonna cheat in my class. So I'd say good job for risk management, but I want you to challenge yourselves and do even better. Figure out how to be a chemical engineer with a moral and ethical framework that leads to integrity, that aligns with your actions. That will help you be so much more successful in your career and it'll help you be a happy and fulfilled person. So the big takeaway is this, use my class as an opportunity to tune up your character. I understand this is a hard subject and it's difficult to talk about and that you're gonna be very challenged. Some of you might be tempted to take a shortcut and take the easy road. I'm here to help and I'm very open to talking about this with you. You should use me as a resource, as an ally and don't see me as your adversary. Now that's the end of the syllabus. Uh, I'm really looking forward to teaching you thermodynamics and do you have any additional questions?